What is up, everybody? This is Recap or Rewind. I'm Jay Lag. And I'm NB. And we are recapping and reviewing you on Lifetime or Netflix, whichever one you're listening to now. Uh, and this is episode seven. And it's called Everything, Everything Shit. Shit. Don't forget, guys, stick around for the ending because we are going to go through our recap roundups, our best moments, our MVPs, our LVPs. Stick around for that because I think it's going to be a good one because the episode was terrible. So <laughs> we got some good, <laughs> we got some good roundups for you guys. Um, and if you are just joining us, thanks so much for listening and joining. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. And if you have just come back, thanks for coming back. Let's get into the episode, y'all. Yeah, do it. Um, so this is about a month after and it's and it's him narrating his kind of story. A month after Peach's death. I'm sorry, a month after Peach died. Slash he kills her. Mm-hmm. And um he's like, everything was amazing for that month. He's like, we were good, I was making breakfast every day, we we're having sex all the time, like good, 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 yep. good, whatever. And uh, you realize that he's talking to a therapist, mm-hmm. um, played by John Stamos. Daddy Stannis. John Stamos. Damn, he looked so he good. Looked really he good. looked so I think. And good. also, congratulations to him. I think he just had a, he's da- a daddy, a, a baby, yeah. like very recently. His he was first like, one. Yeah, I yeah. think he was building a, a crib as the premiere was happening last oh, wow. like on Sunday. He was like, "I'm going to be building a crib, so like I'm not going to be able Damn. to tweet." So it's kind of hot. <laughs> but anyway, um, he says uh, that you know. It goes back and forth between this conversation with Dr. Nikki um, and Joe says in this moment, the relationship is now over. Mm-hmm. So um, they have these really cute moments. So they keep going back to when it was good Their times. Life, yeah. And uh, they have a really cute Scrabble situation. It was very cute. They very play cute. Scrabble and they create like fake words, which mm-hmm. now I want to do with my boyfriend. <laughs> but um, they create a word called everything ship. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Joe. I'm like 99% positive it was Joe that wrote it down. Mm-hmm. And Beck is like really cute about it. She's like, you know, like that's like us. It's like everything is encapsulated. It's just like first love. Very like, you cute. know, that love yeah. situation when you're like in love. Um, and she talks about, I think also at one point in time while they're having this kind of flashback, she talks about her first kiss mm-hmm. and how her first kiss was awful and it was like some guy that she didn't even like. And, um, he recreates her first kiss, mm-hmm. which is really cute because she said it was like outside, like in, in a, a, in a it, tent or something. It was with like she had a boyfriend, but the boyfriend didn't make a move. Yeah. So then she went and like kissed like the boyfriend's like best friend in a tent. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, it was gross. It's regrettable. And then she ended up like he ended up make, recreating. She comes home like, one day and like literally like my dream of a freaking date so or whatever. Adorable. He like put up lights and yeah. like a freaking tent. I'm like super cute. That is the cutest thing ever, ever, ever. ever. Yeah, it was so for sure. cute. He really, and I think both of them, I think this episode really like shows them in a relationship. Like they, yeah. it felt like one of the first real episodes because no one's sneaking around no, kind of, I mean, um, yeah. a little bit, but not really, <laughs> not, nothing crazy. No one's killing anyone really. Well, to um, your point, I was going to say that he says all he wanted to do was just trust her mm-hmm. and he shows him putting the phone away. Mm-hmm. And that's the she first did. time that he decides that he's the yeah. relationship is safe he's enough like, that he can do. We're that. already good. Like I don't need to like look right. at my phone. We are who we are or now. Her phone. Her phone. Yeah. yeah. So he puts the phone away and uh then he's things start to like kind of fall apart with her. Mm-hmm. She's like I got fired from the yoga studio. Um, she doesn't even sound pissed. She's like, yeah, like, she's like, I, like, I like maybe fired. didn't like go to like 25 classes. She's like, like, like she's just I so fell sad. asleep during Savasana <laughs> and they fired me. Like, she didn't so, even care. Like, so then he's like, oh my God, you should totally work at, at the bookstore. The bookstore. <laughs> great idea. Working with your boyfriend. Um, so she's like, oh, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you'll be great. Um, and then it cuts back to Dr. Nikki and Nikki, Dr. Nikki's like a pot smoker. Mm-hmm. So you're trying, it's trying to get like a few details of this character. I would love to know your guys' thoughts on it. Um, like what, like that, the one thing that I will say, and it is, it's also in the book. I can't imagine a therapist that would just like pull out a joint and start smoking while they're talking to you about your problems. Like, yeah. especially when you're Okay. When you go to therapy, okay, Mm -hmm. a real person going to therapy, you try not to use substances like drugs or alcohol or whatever it might be to fix your problems. Mm -hmm. So for someone to come forward and sit in a chair and be like, I'm going to tell you how to fix yourself and then 
roll up a joint and then smoke it right in front of you. I think it's just like, I don't know, should I trust this guy? Like, what kind of vibe are you yeah. giving me that I would rather go to you than to like an actual therapist? And I think that's what they try to kind of like reflect in that moment is like, he's not some straight laced, like by the book therapist. Yeah, yeah. He's obviously something different. He probably has some demons too. For um, sure, and he he's, has he's not doing things like, you know, straight. Uh, so him just taking that joint and like smoking it in front of his client, yeah, uh, just shows you like who he kind of is. Who the Doctor Nikki is, yeah. Um, so then it cuts to Joan, book, uh, Joan back at the bookstore, and they take a picture. She asks Ethan to take a picture, and she. What did like, you think of that? It was cute. I thought it was adorable, mm-hmm. but I think that like they're they're really we're in episode seven, okay? Mm-hmm. Episode seven. There's three more episodes in the end, and now we're only getting into like the relationship side but of it. I but I guess that's how long it took. Yeah, and I think like they've been in a relationship, but this one really felt like it was like a solid relationship yeah. like they were getting like serious like, yeah. boring almost <laughs> like it was like getting to that point where like you get boring a little bit sure and they were doing like the hashtag joe and yeah. back on the instagram yeah. it was very yeah. much that yeah so then you learn in this moment as well that she's going to therapy mm-hmm. so then you're starting to make some connections hopefully so as she, a viewer she, that you know like he's in therapy she's going to therapy um and you don't really know what the situation is she sort of drops the bomb um, in front of Joe because he doesn't know that she was going to therapy. Because yeah. he's like, we trust each other. We yeah. know everything about each other. And then she was like, I'm going to therapy. And he's like, except for this. And he was kind of like, cheese, right? Yeah, he's a little concerned as to why she, he didn't, she didn't like, you know, say anything about it before. So I think that's the situation that they're in. And he starts to like unravel again. So he starts to get a little bit more jealous. He starts to worry about why yeah. she's lying to him. Um, in that moment, do you think um that it's fair for joe to even question someone talking about something like therapy therapy is a huge situation i was just gonna ask you the same thing like like do you think it's shady that she didn't tell him no because i think that if you if you admit that you have issues and you can't go to your partner for them talking about therapy with the partner that you can't talk about those problems with um is a very vulnerable moment. So for him to turn around and be like, oh, but are you cheating on me? Like, it's not fair to her because it could just be as innocent of her just trying to figure out her own life without embarrassing herself yes. in front of her boyfriend. I totally understand that. And the way he reacted, like, was ridiculous. Unfair. But I do think that, like, if you've been seriously dating someone for, like, a month or two, yeah. and then they start therapy, um, and they don't even mention it like, hey, I think I'm going to go to therapy. Yeah. Like, it's a little weird. I mean, it's a little weird. It would be different. I think that she does say that she's already done a few like sessions. It'd be different if like, you know, he's she's gone for like a certain amount of time and he didn't know that she was in therapy for the past like three hours. You know, like it sounds like it. I don't remember what she says exactly in this moment. But if it was the case where she says, you know what, I. I'm, I'm planning to go to therapy. What do you think about that? Or I'm just going to go because of Peach's shit right now, um, which is what she says. But I don't remember if she says it because, like, she's already going. Like, and she's like, well, my therapist said this. And then he's like, what? You're going to therapy? Like, mm-hmm. I don't remember. Anyway, whatever, guys. I'm digressing now. So um, it cuts back to Joe and Dr. Nikki. And you find out that Joe is trying to fish for answers because he creates a gay relationship mm-hmm. with um so joe is not that. joe in that moment joe is paul dave or, or paul or something, something like that yeah. and um his, his, boyfriend his boyfriend is ronaldo yeah. and <laughs> so they work like at like a bar it's not like a bookstore or anything yes. so he's completely changed his story right so he explains the story but he replaces everybody mm-hmm. um so but then it cuts back to back at the bookstore and she's just like lost Yo, like she's like the worst worker ever like i just so hate back like it keeps getting worse <laughs> man <laughs> like uh, she's so I lazy literally can't even talk about her because like she has no motivation whatsoever as a character in this like, moment it's actually interesting to me that like they can create a character like that like has nothing no good quality nothing there's she's nothing not even about a good her worker. Like, guys at least if she was like a hustler and like she's like sick my boyfriend got me a new job i'm gonna be amazing at this i'm gonna put all the books away yeah like, at least like you can look at her and be like wow she's, she's a really lit. hard worker like she's dedicated yeah so i just don't understand like there's nothing good about her at this point still still yeah. 
I just think that, like, why are you even with her? She's such a waste case. Other than her being this beautiful woman, there's nothing that's redeeming. There's no redeeming qualities from Beck at all. All she does is choose her friends over her boyfriend. What else does she do? Uh, she's a lazy worker. She gets fired, like, left, right, and center from everything because she just, like, doesn't know how to motivate herself. She wants to write, but, like, she's not a tortured soul. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't, like... She... And she just makes excuses for herself. She even admitted to herself, like, at that moment, she, like, he's like, what's wrong with you? And she's like, I'm just lazy. Like, I just, she's like, I'm, I have a writer's block and this is part of the process. And then she was like, as I said it, like, I was, like, lying, lying to you. Yeah. Like, she's, she's, not, she's not even believing herself. Like, yeah. what is your core? Like, who are you as a person? Yeah. And it's interesting because I like to, I'd like to throw this to the actual author because we never got a chance to discuss this, obviously, with the author. But... You know, even as people when we were reading the book, like what is the redeeming quality of Beck at this point? Well, in this time? is the thing. I don't think in the book you have to have a redeeming quality for her because it's a book. It's a very one sided uh, story told by the guy, by sure. Joe, and it's his perspective and it's his story, and there's a beginning and end. Mm -hmm. But when you turn it into a TV show, and like these characters really come to life and they have their own stories on the yeah, side, yeah. aside from Joe's perspective you want to feel for her and you want to like her as a character. Right, right. But you can't find anything in, in her that's like a part of you or anything. Yeah. And it doesn't work. Like, it's just not, it's not working for me. And I can't even imagine a season two. Like, let's say, like, if it went into like an actual series and like she was a part of it, like, I would hate her still. Yeah. I don't like her. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. I don't it's know. Really I, I mean, the one thing that I will say is maybe... You know, we're giving her, we're being a little too hard on her just because of the fact that, like, her best friend just died. No, but that's I can't she's give her, been, she's always been that way. So I don't know. I don't know. And I think that maybe, like, that void of having Peach not there makes her even more empty as a character. Because, like, she literally is nothing. She's well, a vessel of a person. I think that gets, like, attracted by all these crazy people that try to fill into her life. Because she doesn't, she doesn't know what she wants in her life. So she has, she's this character that's, like, complicated in her own way. She's complicated because she has nothing. She's completely, like, she's like a leaf in the wind. She just doesn't have anything that's grounding to her. So she just, like, I don't know. She that's why she she attracts like a peach who will save her, a Joe that will save her into her life because she doesn't have anything in her life that really matters. I don't know, but that's like such a sad state to yeah, be. I mean, like, yeah, girl, you need to, you definitely need to yeah. go to therapy from time. And I think in this episode, especially for me, like how I felt, I felt like Joe was trying so hard again. Mm -hmm. Like he was being so effing cute, and like she says, she said even later, like too, she's like, it's like he was trying so hard. Yeah. Like the more you try, the less I like you. Yeah. So like you can see that too, where he's trying so hard to come in, and like she's, she's just you see the emptiness in her more, yeah, and that's true. what like makes me hate her more. I think we'll talk we'll talk about it later as the episode goes on, but I'm really interested to see how far they take this Doctor Nikki storyline because I think there's a few moments where he breaks into the like the office and he reads her file like joe reads her file so we learn what like a like a therapist would diagnose right, her to be right. and the only reason why i'm saying it is just because i think that you know we watch a video clip in this episode but i think that he even has notes that say like she's very narcissistic she's self-centered um so there's all these degrees of understanding who Beck is through Dr. Nikki. And I hope that we get to see those things as well, because I think to our point at this point in time in the, in the show, what is her redeeming quality? What are her issues? What's her baggage? And w can she be fixed at this point? You know yeah. what I mean? Anyway, moving on. Um, so even Ethan, so even Ethan's like, yo, she's a waste case. And uh, he like, Joe doesn't really know what to do. Then it cuts to the officer calling and uh, the officer from yeah, this like the estate really area. Yeah. So he runs to the phone he, and I don't know like how he found out that it was from like Greenwich. I don't remember. Like I guess he saw on the caller ID. Maybe. So he picked it up right away and then he pre pretends to be Mr. Moody and uh, he's like, oh. Uh, no, he doesn't pretend to be Mr. Moody. The guy asks. He's like, I'm from the Greenwich Police Department. Yeah. And he's like, I have your license plate or your car or whatever. Yeah. And he was like, is this is this you? And he goes, yeah, it's speaking. Like, it's me he pretends it's to be like him Mr. right Mr. away Mr. Moody, yeah. and then he says oh i like lent my car out to my nephew yeah. sheldon whatever his spencer yeah spencer whatever and the guy's like oh okay is that true cool so like closed storyline like an like, old man he sounds like the guy like joe <laughs> like the cops like the worst like, cop ever thanks bye yeah um and joe kind of like 
I don't know. It's a weird situation because I don't really recall how this like pans out in the book, but why is this a situation at all? Because Joe's like, oh, I mean, close call. Like that. Was, yeah, like, I feel really like it's close. definitely gonna have to come back. I think. I think Joe kind of he was like you could tell he was scared. He was like that was way too close. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The guy called their book. Maybe it leads up to like the second might, season. It might connect to something. Like, yeah. Maybe it'll be like he has to like leave town yeah. or something. Um. Anyway, uh, going back to to Beck, she's just not happy. She's a miserable biatch, and um, she says therapy is the only thing that's making me happy. And he's like the only thing that makes you happy, which was really rude for. Which her is to pretty say. tight, and she's like, don't take it that way. She's very like like I said, she's very self involved. She's very much like all about herself. She doesn't care about anybody else's like thoughts and feelings. Cause in that moment, Joel's just trying to reach out and trying mm-hmm. to see what's up there. Yeah. And she's like, I don't wanna work. Like I'm sad. I know we've hated Joe too the whole time, but this episode very much felt like he was in the right like everything he felt was a little in the right was, to a degree, was of course. But you know what it's I mean? relatively like, justified for sure. Yeah. I think that anybody would probably go yeah. to a like no, to I'm a not, level. I'm not saying go to his level. I'm just saying like the feelings that he was feeling. Like yeah, her saying he's the only thing that makes me happy. Like hello, your boyfriend's right in front of you. Like yeah. he just fucking built you a tent with yeah. lights. Like <laughs> come on, get it together, girl. Um, and you know what? Actually, just to defend back in this moment, actually, when people try to go far above and beyond for you, it makes you hate yourself even more when you're not happy. So if you mm-hmm. really think about it that way. The fact that she can't be happy frustrates her Probably. more than anything yeah. else. So, you know, like just speaking from personal experience, when you're in those moments, it's just a hard place to be. But that being said, you lean on your partner to say, listen, I'm just not happy. I don't know why I'm feeling unhappy. I just need to like get get through this and maybe you can help me. And he needs to be patient with her. Mm-hmm. But him just being like, I laid it all this up for you. Like I made you dinner. I did. I had a date for you. And like, and now you should be happy. It's also, not. Like, it's not fair. It's a very dramatic you know I mean? thing that she w- just went through. Like she just lost her best friend of how many years? Yeah. A month ago. That's shit that you don't get over. That's yeah. shit that like lasts with you for Forever. years, for your life, possibly. Yeah. Like you know. So but that's what I mean. So I feel you like you can't even. Yeah, you're right. Like like let's like be nice to Beck for like a minute. Mm-hmm. She's gonna be. She's going through some shit right now. She's going through some shit like right now, and I think Joe just wanting it to be a quick fix is pushing her it's like far Ariana away. Like Ariana Grande and Pete, like it's just not gonna it's work. It's not this a good moment. moment. She's yeah. going through her thing. Let her Let be her there. Be, be yeah. supportive, and then that's yeah. it. You just have to be patient with her. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, real real talks. Um. So then it cuts back to the de- the apartment, and he says he's like. Other relationships are not like our relationships. Some of them are really messed up. And then it cuts to him at his apartment and uh, the ex cop guy or the parole officer. Yeah. He's like banging on the neighbor's door. Yeah. And so I didn't understand this layout because I thought the neighbor Paco lived like to the left of his door. No, right? it's the right. It's to the right. So as you see them by the technically from his door. Yes, it's on the it's left side to the left. Yeah. But then that woman was like in that door. Yeah. The new woman. So she is supposed to be Claudia's friend. Karen. Oh, okay. Um, was that how they set her up in the book? I don't think so. No, not at all. Karen Remember, was like, Paco is not even a real person. Oh, true. Like, true, true, <laughs> like true. let's not yeah, forget. Yeah, true. So I guess they make her the friend who's yeah. staying at Claudia's place now to fend off the boyfriend if he ever comes rolling through. And so she comes out and she's like holding a bat. She's like this sassy woman. Yeah. And, um, She's like, get the fuck out of here, yeah. whatever. And he le- he dips. And then she meets Joe because he sees the commotion outside. And she's like, do I know you? And he's like, she's no. Like, what the fuck you looking at? And then she's like, <laughs> then get the fuck out of my face. And then he like, she closes the door. Yeah. But she's like, just some sassy woman. I didn't know who she was. And then I'm like, true. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that is the key. By the That's end of the, the episode, key. yeah. Okay, so back to Dr. Nikki. And um, he's just trying to like, it just keeps cutting back and forth to him and their conversation with each other and how things are kind of falling apart. And then she uh, decides to make it up to Joe by doing like a date at the bookstore. Yeah. So he goes downstairs and in the, what's it called? The cage, the cage cage area. um, She She, like put candles candles everywhere. everywhere. She set up a dinner. Uh, there's like a million like fire hazards yeah. up in there. I'm like, the books are in here. You like, know that, right? Literally, like, Beck, you're literally the worst worker ever. <laughs> like you <laughs> need. And I'm like, the smoke is going everywhere. I'm like, you're and such he a loser. Said, he's like, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure like the flames aren't good for the like vintage <laughs> yeah. antique books. So, 
So anyway, they sit down and have a dinner. She like makes her him like a sandwich, like not even she, she like, like buys it. him a sandwich, yeah. like a meatball sandwich, and then she mentions her birthday. So the whole conversation is about she's like, you know what? I'm just thinking I'm just stressed out because my birthday's coming up, and Peach usually was hugely involved in that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I can do something crazy. Like I can like make yeah. something fun. Let's go to Momofuku. Yeah. And she's like, No, actually, honestly, I just want to do something low key. Like yeah. I can't do this. And um, he's like okay cool like oh, we'll, we'll do something low key then and then it cuts to joe the next day and he's talking to lynn mm-hmm. which we like just got sc- screen time like episode yeah. seven so um he takes her advice and she says listen she doesn't want something low key she obviously wants something like a party she wants, like, a big party she's like girls do this all the time yeah. they're like waiting for you to like come through yeah. and he's like okay true and she's like listen we'll do like a thing where it's like literary characters and like everybody dresses up and like we can have it here at the mm-hmm. bookstore and he's like cool yeah that's it and all the while he's his voiceover is sort of saying like i should have known better yeah like, i shouldn't have he's like but I, I think i was so anxious that like i did all the wrong things in this moment right so yeah and there is a cute little moment with lynn and joe where she says listen like beck was a bit of a sponge with with peach and she just came in and did everything for back in so many ways um and that's the person that that's the relationship they had she's like god rest her soul but like she was who she was we didn't like her but we loved her Mm -hmm. i'm like okay relax um anyway it was a good it was a good little moment that lynn got her screen time that was it and then (laughs) it cuts to um joe taking the cake downstairs from his apartment and he like created a really cute cake it was so effing cute it was like the scrabble game right yeah and it says and everything ship it on was it. so effing cute yeah. but i was like how are you gonna take an open cake through new york city like they, it wasn't even covered <laughs> I'm like, that's gonna get like, like all pollution. dirty and like polluted and <laughs> also like get to the party it's her birthday so wouldn't you say like happy birthday back not like everything ship it's kind of yeah. like why would you do that? Yeah, it's such a boyfriend like, thing to do. It's like, such a um, weird. My friends boyfriend. are gonna be there, so it's not just about us. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know it's kind of embarrassing, but that's who Joe is, I guess. In that moment, you it was see just cute though. It was actually such a cute cake. Um, and then he bumps into the neighbor. So Karen. once again, Karen has an interaction. She's like, "What that do?" And he's like, kind of looking cute. Like yeah. he got his hair slipped back. He's got to wear. He's who wearing was he turtleneck. trying to be? Hemingway. Hemingway. Wow. Okay. I don't know what Hemingway looks like, but sure, I guess he wears a lot of turtlenecks. So then it comes to the party, and uh, everybody thinks that, like, everybody's getting lit, but she's late. She's, like, 40 minutes yeah. late. She's supposed to show up at the bookstore at, at 9 o'clock. Yeah. It's 9.40 at this point. And he's Ethan, freaking out. Yeah, he's and Ethan's like, chill, just, like, go grab a drink. And um, suddenly, like, Lynn runs, and she's, she's like, wearing hair. She's, like, Hermione Gr- Granger from Harry Potter. And she's like, she's here. Like, she's here. Yeah. So everybody hides. Yeah. And then... Um, like they pop out and it's Blythe and she's like oh like, so American so Lynn, like I don't understand you thought your best friend was Blith Blythe Blythe <laughs> from far like I don't understand why I guess you she's, they're both her. blonde but oh, like true. why would you not like know I guess at this point so you realize weird. how drunk Lynn is as true well. like <laughs> true. she's pretty wasted the rest of yeah. the, the rest so of the then, episode like, she walks in so, yeah so at this point he is very confused as to where she is she he messages her messages her and says where are you and you can see like the blue the, the dots come up and then they disappear Ugh. and it's like the worst feeling oh. ever for anyone who's ever had to deal with that the worst um so while he's bitching to lynn he's like where the hell is she this is so selfish you're supposed to be here by like now he goes off like yeah and lynn's being literally the most waste case she's like i don't know man and you're like whatever you know how she is like she's just like so sloppy yeah. and then of course she doesn't even warn her that freaking beck is right but behind nobody him. did like, like you're here for her birthday and like this girl the birthday girl walked in nobody, and nobody said, said surprise hey, happy birthday like nobody so useless you friends. all are waste people <laughs> all of you all y'all so she walks up behind joe and she's like he's like i'm so sorry she's like, what the f joe she's like wow we need to talk what did you think of that moment because i thought it was ridiculous the fight i hated it the fight no like even her just walking like how did she walk into that bookstore and not one person said beck you're yeah. here she just freaking creeps up on on joe i mean like, it, so it should have been like technically it should have been at the front door like really something she, closer she yeah, walks in and she's like, all the way into her birthday party yeah. so anyway so she pulls him aside and she says listen i told you i didn't want anything crazy you ended up doing something insane and he's like i honestly listened to lynn because i was like at my wits end i didn't know what to do and she was like you're not 
like you're not listening to me this is not what i wanted so she's lashing up because mm-hmm. like sh- her birthday's ruined and for him she's like uh, or for him he's like but where the hell were you you were supposed to come here at 9 40 even for dinner to show up for dinner with me mm-hmm. and she like makes all these reasons why she's like therapy ran long and uh goes to therapy at like eight at night like, like not even just therapy at eight at night but like it's your birthday you made plans with your man she's like and then i went to walk after she's like i had a few drinks and then rose. he's like you smell like rose and she's like yeah i went to a bar like, like what she like, sounds so sketchy she sounds sketchy you know what i mean like i think that in those situations i think it's completely within your right as a person to ask where the hell you've been yeah your boyfriend just threw you a party and you're missing like that's pretty tight yeah and you're not giving any answers you're not even saying br like brb i'm gonna be late nothing yeah. literally nothing it's such a selfish moment for her yeah. and i think even when he says it like why even apologize you should be like yeah bitch like you were fucking late you showed up to this party and you still cussed me out and you still are turning around and trying to defend yourself like girl get out of here at this point in time i would be breaking up with her i'd be like bitch bye like why are you even with <laughs> yeah, him at this point seriously. you know what i mean why are you even with her yeah. anyways so he gets he spirals which is the wrong way to go and then he's like show me your phone Mm -hmm. because he doesn't trust anybody he's like i he's like show me your phone so guys rewinders i want to ask would you let him check your phone i mean you know what in that moment yeah because if you have nothing to hide yeah right if you have nothing to hide it's all good right and also you're being shady like he's throwing you a party you're late you're giving these bullshit excuses yeah so obviously he's gonna be suspicious and then on top of that he's asking for your phone which is not cool for sure but if you're not hiding anything why not just clear it clear it right now and just like settle yeah. it all right you want to make him feel stupid show him your phone yeah you know what i mean exactly you want to exactly. make him feel stupid but you were being shady so you're not gonna want to show your phone exactly and in that moment i don't think it was fair i think that like I had this whole debate with my my boyfriend when we watched the episode and it was the it's that whole thing where some people think that it's not a common thing to not trust somebody it's not about the fact that you can't trust someone it's the fact that you are being shady so in those moments if you're being shady if you have access to someone else's phone and you're not using it then that's a different story like he can do it this is a different circumstance because she was being uber shady she was being uber shady and at the same time like it's very reasonable for him to ask that he didn't want to do it he didn't want to do it because he can literally go into his ceiling and grab the phone and check out check it out for himself but he trusted her enough that he let her you know kind of come through by herself and she like slapped it back in his face anyway it was managed poorly obviously on both sides but i just think that personally if you have nothing to hide then why exactly and why if not? you and if you want to feel stupid here take my phone mm-hmm. and i'm not going to talk to you you get to sleep on the couch tonight mm-hmm. like you you fight about it later and then you move on mm-hmm. but for her to be like if there's no trust then there's no relationship like she took it to this next level she, girl, defensive you're talking about no trust like look what you just did tonight yeah it's just like you're being shady yeah. anyway let's move on this is like a full relationship yeah, podcast this yeah. episode guys um so then uh she leaves and then everybody's like okay bye <laughs> and then like ethan's like coming out with the birthday cake <laughs> it's ethan. so awkward um but let's talk about ethan real yeah, quick because him cutie. and Blythe be flirting Ooh, it up so hard in that party they had some cute ass lines where she was like talking about like literary She's characters like, who, are you? Oh, who are you like they yeah. were just so so nerdy like, and cute together i have a cat named like emily like whatever yeah. and she's like you yeah. know like it was just like very <laughs> yeah. it was very like nerdy flirty yeah it was nerdy so hashtag nerdy flirty yeah um so then it cuts to um the next morning mm-hmm. and beck once again pulls a fucking apology because she does it i feel like all the time and with donuts like as if donuts are the key to everybody's one donut. soul not even donuts <laughs> plural one. it was one effing cheap ass donut yeah she's like old-fashioned just like i can't like she already done did this like if you guys remember in episode two i think she blows him off and then she comes back with a donut and she like apologizes to him at this point in time apologize with a blowjob not a fucking donut (laughs) like he's already had the donut no what's a donut but at this point in time why even bother coming back she's so needy but at the same time like so so what happens in that moment 
whatever he she lets him he lets her in because obviously he loves her yeah. she brings in scrabble and they like yeah. get back together and they once again have like a spurt moment where like he's talking to dr nikki and he's saying like you know things were good for like mm-hmm. a hot second this time it wasn't like a month it was like oh like a not day. even a week yeah and so then it just keeps cutting back and she's like are you sure at this point like she was cheating he's like no she he, she was cheat or he was cheating ronaldo yeah. was cheating with the therapist yeah and like dr nick is like, like oh, okay cool and he's like how did how do you know like is this when it all ended and she's like no, no no not yet everything was like fine for a moment and so this whole time when he's with beck in this moment yeah. her phone is like like off, off the hook like once again girl the, you come to your boyfriend's house turn off your sound yeah like why like, ding, 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 ding. and like and you ain't answering it in front of your yeah. boyfriend like it is the sketchiest sketchiest thing sketchiest to do. Fuck. turning your phone alone on the other side so that the screen doesn't show is yeah. already sketchy it's sketchy plus you're like dinging like off the hook like your s- people are weird and people do that though. people do that all the time 100 percent, and it's very sketchy and i wouldn't be surprised if somebody turned around and then, like, he looks at her like huh and she's like what like well obviously yeah like at this point in time why can't you just explain to each other you guys are sitting in a room alone yeah. why can't you guys just have a conversation yeah. and communicate with each other yeah. it's just like tiptoeing obviously you're tiptoeing around each other in terms of this particular relationship and it's really messed up so um then he decides to now break out his own old OG phone. So he as she leaves for work, I think she says. She's like, I'm yeah, going to, going to, to work or class. And um, he takes the phone, he reads the messages, and there's like three hearts, and it's like somebody like it's like a fox emoji. It's like the it's like the fox emoji. Yeah. And she's talking to this person and she's like not really sure like, what the situation is. We did our is. spot at the usual spot or something right. they talk about. So then he's like, fuck this, I'm following yeah. her. He follows her to this area. He watches her from across the road, like putting lipstick on in a, yeah. in a window. I'm like, at this point in time, like she's being the most sketchy person yeah. possible. Like, why wouldn't you do the things that you're yeah. doing? So he follows her. I feel like I would do this. Like, I feel like I'd be the psycho that would be following, following. the person and be like, what's happening right now? So then um she ends up like in this like park area and he loses her at one moment he loses sight of her why something happens i think in that moment i think that she no i think he's just like in his own head distracted by something i think he's like he's like oh like you know where where are you whatever like not what where are you but like he's just like thinking about his his own relationship he's like why are you lying to me like all these different things and then she shows up behind him yeah and he's and she's like are you following me and and he looks guys he looks so sketch he's, he's wearing like, his hat like tilted d- d- like low you can't even see his face yeah. his collar's like popped up yeah like, he looks like a he looks like he's sketchy yeah. yeah for sure and then he's like no 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 no. he's like i was just to run this area to get something he's like, and then i and then i saw you like, and then i was gonna no. like walk around and, then I, and i'm so happy she booked it she's like uh you're fucking lying obviously like yeah it's just like anyway so she's like listen we can't do this you don't trust me and he like goes off on her he's like who's like the 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 fox like Mm -hmm. who's who's this person she was like it's my friend does she ask how he saw the message oh because she thinks he looked at her phone yeah like Like just like broke into her phone or whatever yeah whatever like the real phone yeah the real phone and so she's like i told you if we don't have trust then there's like nothing in this relationship this relationship is over and she walks away and he's like were you shook that like she like broke up with him i mean not shook because i know this happens in the book but i would love to know what you guys thought did you guys think that it was an appropriate time to break up with somebody and to turn it around fast here's the thing once again sketch bag back doing something on the defensive when you feel like you're cornered yeah. you always react that way when you She's always like, feel We're done here i was like whoa you're, like, you're done here because you're done sketchy yeah you psycho yeah like you're just as sketchy as he is yeah, if you course. you're the one that and like i said i don't want to justify any of his actions at all but you pushed him to this point you pushed him to the moment where he literally had, had to, to follow, follow you, you. Well, well he's already doing that before yeah, <laughs> yeah. like that's but what yeah. i mean it's interesting that in this book or and this in the show they made him a sketch bag from the beginning because she would make me a sketch bag mm-hmm. like that's what i mean and that would be an interesting story mm-hmm. too turning in turning somebody into 
someone that becomes like this obsessive person just because of how they're acting but here's the thing and it's actually a really beautiful thing in the beginning he was the stalker he was the paranoid one he was so insecure and then there was a moment where he gave it up like we see him put the phone away and he was totally comfortable with their relationship right and if it wasn't for her sketchiness pulling this back out of him he would be fine he would have been fine right? yes he exactly. would be totally fine the issue is i mean I, she's not a perfect person of course she's definitely not perfect at all um in those moments you have to find a way to pull yourself back if you can't or communicate that with your partner like we see these parts in the epi- in in the in the show as well as in the book you read it and you say like oh but they were like having chinese food and she was getting cranky about what kind of food they were having why can't you guys talk about your real relationship? You guys are talking about food instead of yeah, talking about real, like your real issues. Uh, like, but not really. Not in a working relationship. People, not, but it's not working. Yeah, it's clearly. obviously dysfunctional. Like it's they have issues. Anyways, so she breaks up with him in in that moment, and then it cuts back to therapy, and he's like, "That's why I'm like sad. Like it's just like mm-hmm. his conclusion it's of the done. story." Yeah. And Doctor Nikki's like, "Listen, I think that you're." two types of people your one part of you is like this like child who just wants to be loved and the other one like is hoping that they can find true love and, and believes that, in true and love believes which is in like it. amazing yeah and he's like uh do you want to do you want help like mm-hmm. do you want me to continue to to help you and he's mm-hmm. like actually no i'm good and the entire time actually we didn't mention this he's holding this like knife in his hand like this little like letter opener i don't know it looked like a letter opener and you think i guess you're assuming that he's gonna probably like stab him in the neck because he's like this violent psycho but what he does is he lets him leave the apartment the the office and then he breaks back into the office joe breaks back into the office and then checks his laptop surprisingly enough he's not a peach and like had like some next level password he just like opened up the computer and was free and like whatever and um he finds video files right of back yes so at this point as a viewer this is your first time that you realize that this is beck's therapist as well or no i don't think so does she mention dr nikki she does say dr nikki she oh, does okay so that was the reveal right yeah, before that was okay. a reveal for sure but um, like we know that it's hit him but i was right. wondering if the audience is I, the first yeah, time like, yeah i think that you probably put the connection together like right away yeah i, I don't guess, know yeah. let us know if you what you wait where you guys realized it was like the right therapist right. or yeah. the same therapist i can't imagine them going to separate therapists just because but yeah, yeah anyway true. yeah so um so we you hear find, all these yeah, files. You, you with hear, Beck. Yeah, you hear this one file, the last file, where she's like, I broke up with him. He stalked me. Um, and then uh, Dr. Nikki asks, like, what would you say if he was here? And then it's this really cool moment, actually, where they're sitting mm-hmm. across from each other. Like, Dr. Nikki turns into Joe, mm-hmm. and or she's sitting in front of him. And she says, I would say, like, I'm really fucked up. I'm embarrassed. I'm like, I'm a messed up person right now. And I just want to and your love is pushing me away like you wanting to love this person who's like all messed up is making me feel even worse which is what i said earlier because it happens you like if you don't it's it's that thing that rupaul says if you don't love yourself you can't love anybody mm-hmm. else and she's like in a very much like a self-loathing moment in her life right now and so she just feels unlovable and for him to still extend his love for her it just makes it suffocating for her yeah. she can't feel happy so um she's like i feel like i need to let you go because i am i'm not happy with myself yeah um and then he like realizes he's like is this a is this a story of like a cheater is this like audio clips of like a a cheating woman Mm -hmm. no it's just like a broken human Mm -hmm. being and he was like i was wrong in this moment Mm -hmm. to accuse you of that and i need to like make amends so he goes back to her apartment which was really big of him i yeah, have to does. say like that was a beautiful it is too. It, it's huge for both of them like I he think. doesn't keep getting paranoid he's like yo i was wrong yeah like this is exactly. actually like a girl that's like really sad and depressed right and uh he's like I, he decides to let her go he even goes back into the basement and he smashes the phone and he's like okay we're like done done mm. like he's he's like there's no there's yeah. no connection anymore and then he goes to her apartment and i think what she says too is like if you love me you'll let you'll me let go. me go yeah. yeah it's like the typical yeah. saying but she goes he goes back to the apartment and then he gives her a scrabble book scrabble back and he's like honestly i think what you need right now now is like not me and i'm just saying goodbye and mm-hmm. she was like he's he apologizes yeah. for like being crazy and then she was like okay goodbye yeah it was, really was kind of sad it was very cute yeah, yeah. it was kind of sad um and 
then he goes back upstairs and then the uh, the neighbor of uh, Karen is just like chilling on the stairs mm-hmm. and she's like what's up what's popping and he's like I just woke up with my girlfriend so yeah. like I'm just like pretty bummed and then she's like wait she like stops him and then um, they just start started making yeah, out and, and then, it cuts like, to them like making out and yeah, having and sex, sex and like bow, bow, bow. and then so that's Karen so that's Karen, <laughs> <laughs> so that's Karen. Um, and then she like goes to the bathroom which is re- and then we get a really cool moment where Candace Candace, oh, yeah. his ex, comes back into the room she and she up. says, um, are you going to leave Beck alone or are you going to keep like her along just like you did for me? Yeah. Like you, you'll you never let her go. You'll know what like, happens to her like what happened to me, essentially. Exactly. So we know that like and she kills Candace. Yeah. So then he he like starts to freak out a little bit because he's like, is this just, just a distraction? Like, am I actually, and I think that's just the lead into the next episode, which is like, basically like he's going to try to figure out his own life and see if he can let go, let go of Beck properly. Him smashing the phone clearly didn't do enough for him to like truly let go. So yeah, that'll be very interesting to see how they play that all out. But that's the end of the episode. What did you think of that little ditty at the end? Um, it was good. I think that the next few is going to be interesting to see how everything just kind of comes to the end. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm interested to see. Three more episodes, y'all. It's going to be crazy. I I think I'm ready for it to, like, come to this conclusion almost. And also, you have to remember, we forgot to mention this, he does continue, like, therapy with Dr. Nikki. Right. So, the originally where he's like, peace out, I'm not doing this, he he does come back and he's like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like, I think I need therapy, too. Um, I don't think John Samuels was was um, like logged on for the rest of the four episodes right. or three episodes. So I think he might just maybe be next week and then that's it. Pro- I so can imagine that. Yeah. But I just think that like, yeah, I think that you read in the book that he decides that Dr. Nikki's kind of cool anyway. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm going to go to therapy. Like, yeah. as I'm investigating her, I'm going to go to therapy because yeah. he's actually like tell me some truth bombs about myself. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, cool. Yeah. So that's kind of like how he ends up going to therapy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's get into our recap roundups. Best moment. Um, my best moment was him opening up the laptop and opening up the file. I think that I really mm-hmm. liked that shot and how it was done. It was kind of a heartbreaking moment for both of them, I think. Like, him realizing how stupid he was for not trusting her. Yeah. And then at the same time, her hearing her vulnerabilities. Because I think that while we were, like, hating on back this whole episode, mm-hmm. it is a moment where you get to kind of redeem her a little bit because you get it's into so her real. head. Yeah. And she re- you realize, like, how much pain and how much self-loathing she's actually going through. Um, what was your best moment? My best moment was him with the tent because I think oh, that yeah. was so freaking cute. And there's so many, there's so many good moments with Joe throughout this entire season. Yeah. There's so many cute little moments where I'm like, oh my god, he's actually like such a cool person and like, yeah, like boyfriend material. Sure. In these moments, this tent moment was so freaking cute. One of the moments, and I just loved it. WTF, WTF moment. moment. My WTF moment was when she catches him in the park because I totally forgot. Right. Totally forgot that that happens. And the way that it was shot, it was like he's turning and then she's already behind him. Yeah. She's like, what the F are you doing here? And I was like, oh it's my like God. It's like reverse stalker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was so scary. Yeah. Um, my WTF moment is more just like, what the hell's wrong with you, Beck? Is when she like does the dinner downstairs. Yeah. Because literally, like, there's a million candles. That's a fire hazard. Just on a general day, you're in a bookstore. Like, you can kill everyone. So, yeah. I think she's just cute, though. It's cute, fine. It's cute, fine. But, like, no one would ever no, do no that. One no one, one would that. ever do that. But I also think, too, like, it shows, like, at that mo- in that moment, you're so desperate to hold on to what you have. She's like, I'll just do a date night and it'll solve everything. It's not going to solve shit. Like, yeah. there's clearly still, like, this huge issue between the two of you. So. Exactly. That's fair. Fair enough. MVP. Who's your MVP? My MVP is going to go to Joe because I think he Joe. was he was really cute this episode. And I think the fact that he, like you were saying, he books himself in the end when he like hears the, the audio yeah. files where he's it's like, you know what? <laughs> he's like, this isn't sketchy. You just have issues and yeah. this needs to be done with. It's such a 
real realization moment for a character who's like a sociopath. Yeah. You know, like it's someone true. who should be like, no, fuck this, I'm gonna kill her anyways. Yeah. Like he doesn't <laughs> yeah. react that way. He reacts in such a calm in a very fair way. and like logical way, which why, is so shocking. Why do you think that is? Because he didn't do the, he didn't do that with Peach. He like irrationally just killed her. Well, I think like Or I mean well, in the he show loves her. He doesn't love Peach, right? Right. So he so cares right? enough. He about cares her. more like he cares about her. Right. And like hearing those words like if you love me, you'll let me go. Right. He took it and like ran with it. He was like true. Yeah. But I think you also have to remember, like, it's also what Dr. Nikki said, too, about him. It's like, he's someone who just believes blindly in true love. And true love yeah. in so many ways yeah. is something that is hard to achieve without a lot of hard work. And, like, you know, it's it's not as perfect as people think it yeah. is, you know? And it's this, like, heightened level of romanticism, which he tries to do so often. But if you leave it at that level, you're either going to get bored or you're just going to, like... It's, a, it's unrealistic for both people to, yeah. to think that that's going to be this fairy tale for the rest of their lives. Yeah. So he starts to unravel in the moments where it's not perfect. And I think that's his issue. Um, you know, honestly, my MVP is also Joe. I think that he pulled it through this episode. I think that he did what he could. And I think I could defend him in a lot of his actions this episode, including him stalking her and finding out where the hell she was going, putting lipstick that was on a little him much, in a but window. Yeah. I don't know. If I saw... If I saw somebody that I was dating walking across the street, fixing his hair and like you're looking right. all cute it's, and then right. walking away into some mysterious right. space, like, come on. But like, the, if, completely I'm, if justified. I ever caught my boyfriend stalking me, we're done forever. Like, that's crazy. That's psycho. Uh, I, I know there's no way I could up with that. Not if you were the one that was going to a sketchy no, place. I don't, I don't care. No, that's no. so weird. That's no. so weird to me that you got up, put your clothes on and you followed me. That's so effing weird. I don't know. You know? I don't know. It was. It just creeped me out. I just can't. I can't. <laughs> Agree I can't. to disagree. I mean, jeez. Because this is the thing, right? Like you're saying, like you saw her putting her makeup on. You're not supposed to see those things because you're not supposed to be following her. You know. But she's doing something she's sketchy. sketchy. Yes, hundred percent. She's sketchy and she needs to be dumped, but not followed. You know what I mean? All right. You know. Uh, sure. Fine. Let's see. Fine. LVP. LVP is not going to be back because I think we ranted on her enough. But mm -hmm. everyone at that damn birthday party, <laughs> first of all, girl, you got no Fair good enough. friends because nobody even screamed surprise. Nobody said happy birthday to you. You walked all the way into the bookstore. Yeah. She's, and she's no got one called you friends, out. So LVP sure. to everyone at that birthday party. <laughs> My LVP is going to be back just because I know that we talked about her to great lengths. But I just think that in this moment, in this, in this episode, she doesn't do anything that's redeeming at all, except for maybe the last little moment at the therapy session. But she doesn't even do that he breaks into the computer to find that file she doesn't express it herself so she's being this aloof standoffish person not answering the question that he needs from her to say like i am fucked up i do need your help she never says it once in the entire episode he only gets it from that one thing from stalking her and like breaking into like that shit so the, the best, best line my best line i think was right at the end and he talks about her i guess and he's like where you love the bad things about someone as much as the good maybe a little even a little more and when he says this it's like showing all like her like worst moments and yeah. like their best moments yeah and i think it's so true like you see that like because we always ask that we're like how does joe like love her she's such an idiot but like this is what happens right like you accept the bad yeah and you accept the good too it's true it's very true very real yeah they had some real quotes in yeah. this episode and i'm gonna do two just because i can and the first one is a more jokey one it was um from lynn and she says part of the fun is making a guy think that you don't want something and seeing if he comes he still comes through yeah and it's such an interesting thing because i think that we play a lot of games in relationships mm -hmm. and this is just a mindset that a lot of people have sometimes where they make a lot of assumptions without actually communicating with the other person when she says i don't want something crazy then just listen to her straight up but like to have a friend who like is like no man like i think that he should like totally wants to do something crazy like for and for him to listen to that is very true to i think our generation and how we just think that you know like everybody's playing a game everybody wants to psychologically trick each other into mm -hmm. doing something and she wasn't playing a game at all and she wasn't playing a game yeah so sometimes don't take advice from your friend's best friend <laughs> yeah basically what your friend should know you way better than that <laughs> yeah and um my next one is from Dr. Nikki, and he says, some people have a hard time letting love in. Some people are built for love. Some people are always searching, searching for someone to love them the way that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And 
it just cuts to like every montage of like every relationship right now and it shows like Blythe and Ethan and you know it it shows you know Beck trying to like get herself together so I just think it was a very good moment even for Dr. Nikki because like he's kind of like aloof this episode but I think that was a great moment where he was actually able to converse and say something that like had had meat on it um, and tell that to Joe and I think that's what kind of keeps him going back to, to Dr. Nikki in the first place so yeah for sure yeah that's it y'all Shit. what did you guys think of the episode let us know make sure you guys um, let us know what you think about what's gonna happen next uh, what do you think of this new uh, relationship that um, Joe's about to get himself into Karen and Joe um, and that's it thanks for listening thanks for listening Bye. Bye.